All right, guys, welcome to our first battle in our series on battles of 18th century Europe. Uh, yesterday, we finished up our series on 17th century Europe, where we are heading over to Bavaria. Uh, modern, uh, wow, words are hard. Uh, modern day Germany, southeast, if you, uh, or southwest, wow. No, southeast. Oh, God, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, words are so hard right now. <laughs> Uh, Southeast Germany, uh, in case you don't know where Bavaria is. Uh, part of the War of Spanish Succession, the Battle of Blenheim. So what we're going to see is a Allied force uh, go up against a French force. Allies about 52,000, the French about 56,000. Uh, so we are going to use Austria to represent the Allies, and then, uh, you know, obviously France to represent France. Uh, looks like we're just getting our troops into position. Uh, now, I have less troops than the French. They have more cannons. They have more cavalry. So I'm trying to get into a position. Uh, you guys have seen this before when I face armies of about equal size, but uh, more cavalry than I have, um, where I arrange my forces basically in a formation to repel cavalry. And then uh, to follow, have kind of just follow up positions to be able to repel infantry without having to maneuver them around too much after that cavalry assault. So that's what I'm doing here. Just trying to get my troops in a good position out there. Yes, sir. Uh, I do have some cavalry as well, not a lot. So I will have to rely on my infantry to basically hold their own. Uh, which is not bad when you're using the Austria faction in this game because uh, they're the only faction where infantry units are 200 instead of 160. Uh, so it's kind of nice because they can form a little bit thicker lines each particular unit while still having a really nice line to uh, maximize firepower. And the, the thick, or I should say the deep formations, like you're seeing six lines, uh, the deeper the formation, the higher their morale. Yes. So if you put them in super thin lines to try to maximize their uh, firing capabilities, they're more likely to break or shatter and uh, flee the battlefield. So having these 200 uh, man formations is actually really convenient. You know, even though it's it's not like I'm given more soldiers total, uh, just more soldiers each unit. Uh, so it's not like I'm getting, like, <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm outnumbering the French by doing that. Uh, it's just, uh, ends, it up, ends up kind of translating to higher morale, which is going to be really useful in this battle. Uh, by the War, War of Spanish Succession, if you guys aren't, uh, well-versed in this uh, particular time period in history... Uh, following the medieval period, and this really started in the 1500s, to be honest, uh, and it's it becomes an issue all the way into the really the 20th century. Uh, you have all these monarchies in Europe, and they've been intermarrying for a long time. In fact, this was actually a big uh, spark for the Hundred Years' War to go back to the 15th century, the 1400s. Uh, they're all marrying each other because they want to keep uh, their their princesses and their princes marrying princesses and princesses. Uh, you know. So, what ends up happening is you get, like, every once in a while you have a king die without an heir. So, let's say, like, Belarus, uh, you know, dies without an heir, and maybe the closest relative to his is his, like, cousin's daughter. Like, and his cousin might be the king of Sweden. And so... The Swedish princess is now the first in line to be the monarch of Belarus. But what happens is, uh, in some nations, they argue over whether a woman can be a monarch. And so maybe the second in line to be the monarch is actually, uh, you know, is actually like the, the Belarusian dead king's second cousin, who's the Duke of uh, Winchester over in England. And so, so the Duke of Winchester is at the throne. Well, then a war erupts between Sweden and the UK over which of those two options gets to actually be the king of Belarus. And 
Uh, by the way, I'm just this is spitballing uh, an example. I don't think Belarus ever had a war of succession, but uh, but that's what happens often. I mean, that was really the the start of uh, what sparked the Hundred Years' War in France. And there's a lot of wars of succession. This is simply one of them. The Spanish War of Succession was actually a pretty big deal. Uh, or I should say the War of Spanish Succession. It was a pretty violent outbreak because there was a lot of tensions going on in Europe at the time. And it was really a huge spark for that war. Uh, but anyway, we've got some of the French... Sending cavalry out to my flank, maybe I'm, maybe a reconnaissance, maybe a charge, but I've decided to not put my troops in square. We're going to maximize our, our firing, get some nice shots off on these French. Now, they are assaulting the militia that I've got, but I think the militia can hold their own. We've repelled and we've shattered the gendarmerie, uh, the kind of provincial cavalry. <clears throat> And here we go, we've got the French infantry moving up. Their formations actually kind of look awesome out there. They almost look like they're, they're little tin soldiers with their uniforms because they're that gray, that like white color. We've got more of a gray with green trim. I like that. Kind of like the gray with green trim. I think if I were to design a uniform, uh, you know, if I were to head my own kingdom or duchy or whatever, we would go like a dark gray with a, a navy trim and, uh, you know, the darker, the, the war, the colder climates. Because, you know, if it's like the British Empire going into, like, equatorial Africa, uh, you wouldn't want, like, super dark colors, I guess. So maybe it's a lighter, go you know, like a, I don't know, maybe this is actually a good color for, for hotter climates. Light gray, that's not going to, like, get overheated too bad. But at least for the the cool the cooler climates, I live in Alaska, so I feel like that would be fine for Alaska. It doesn't ever really get too hot where I live. Uh, so we'll we'll go with the the slate gray with navy trim. I think that'd look awesome. I think there's a way where you could mod this game to customize uniforms and customize the flag. Maybe one day I'll do that. I think that would be awesome if I could, like, make my own custom faction for this game. It would be Anthro Joe's. The Duchy of Anthropology. It should be like Anthropology Peacekeepers, like the UN, but in the 19th century. Uh, but anyway, here we go. Looks like the French infantry are starting to deploy. I think we've basically gotten rid of most of their cavalry. Uh, looks like I'm redirecting some of my cavalry over to this flank because the Aust the uh, French are pushing hard on my right. I think they are trying to capture my guns here. Get some shots off all these guys. Looks like we're firing more at the uh, the more distant units back there. Got some militia in the back lines we're targeting, I guess. French infantry is starting to get in range for boys. Always a good idea to support your boys. French may be gearing up for a bayonet charge over here. Trying to get the volume up for you guys. I think it's at max. <laughs> You guys are getting close. Come on, get your reloads in, boys. All right, looks like I'm pausing real quick. To, oh, man, they are pushing hard. I think they're going to try to make an assault against my militia and try to crack the nut over here. We've got two uh, regiments of militia. I think they're going to try to crack the nut over there. I've brought up some cavalry to help out. Uh, and it looks like over here, I'm actually... I So, okay, so what had happened over here was I actually pushed up my infantry pretty far. I think I went up to this hill. 
because uh, the French are moving pretty slow on their right. So I wanted to get some quick shots. I'm falling back to this position here. Uh, it's really nice because it'll force the French to funnel into right here. And I'll get some really nice shots on those guys as they bunch up. Uh, I've got some cavalry over here as well to help repel any assaults on my center. But it's the general's cap, so I'm not sure how long they'll actually last. Uh, and it looks like the French are pushing on my right a powerful melee charge against my line. Hopefully these guys can hold. Now, we are still in a time period where, uh, to use bayonets, we have to plug them, not fix them. So, I am still hesitant about plugging bayonets because uh, that'll mean I won't be able to fire my muskets anymore. Yeah, see this? Ooh, looks like a danger close. The French line infantry are firing into my militia. Uh, the militia are wavering. They might actually break my militia here. They're getting some good hits in. And you're, you're not even firing at the people right in front of you. What are you doing? Yeah, I may have to send my cavalry in pretty soon. Looks like some of those musket shots are going over our heads. Fortunately, they're not hitting the uh, artillery crew. Over here, I'm moving up my center, trying to get a little bit of flanking fire in. On the French, uh, coming at our right, but uh, French are quick to redirect some of their right flank over to the center to prevent that. They're getting some really powerful shots in on this uh, regiment here. Yeah, or I guess not a regiment, it would be uh, like a company. But this is on a scale... I think this is on a scale of like 20 to 1, so that'd be like 200 times 20. It's like, I guess that would actually be something like a brigade, if we're talking the scale, 200 times 20. About 4,000, so that'd be like a brigade. Get some good shots off on my brigade, I think. French Cavalry go for a bold charge, but they're redirecting to assault my center. And that, honestly, I think that was a bad call. They should have continued the assault on the uh, right there. Now, I am firing the uh, canister shot because it looks like, man, they shattered my, uh, my cavalry support and uh, the militia. I think they're going to break through here. Now I am going to use my artillery to try to hold the line, setting more cavalry up to help defend, but I think I'm actually eventually going to pull back and abandon my right flank to save my army. Uh, by the way, this battle is really rough, uh, but also a little bit long. So if you guys need to get your snacks and drinks on, hit that pause button. We we're talking uh, Deutschland, so uh, always a, a good time to get some pretzels and some mustard. As I've said before, we are typically a, a uh, you know equal opportunity snackers at this channel, but never when it comes to cheese on pretzels. That is sacrilegious. We're not from Wisconsin, all right. Never put cheese on a pretzel ever. Mustard is the only acceptable condiment. It looks like we have repelled a cavalry assault, but they are just falling back. I think they're going to renew an assault on my right. The artillery guns get some bold uh, canister shot in on the French that are about to overwhelm these guys. I don't know if we have many more shots left in us, but we are going to fight to the end to uh, 
support this flank. Uh, put these guys in the square formation. The last of my troops um, on my right as the line falls apart. Now some of my troops on the left have come back with militia. So we're just going to get them in a skirmish, skirmish position to harass the French left as they try to overwhelm my cannons. Now, what I could have done is instead of switch to canister shot, use the opportunity of the last stand here to uh, move these cannons out, but I just, they're not horse artillery, so they would have moved slowly, and I think this is about more valuable use of my time to just use a last stand, get some uh, canister shot on the enemy. I think we've got one last volley left of us before they overrun these cannons, so we're going to make a count. And that is going to be it. They're going to overrun those cannons now, uh, but Valiant, last stand from those guys. I am pulling my line back now, as you can see. Uh, French cavalry going for a bold charge against uh, my line infantry. And the French infantry move closer, tighten the grip, as uh, so to say. Now, over on my left, we're still doing really well. Uh, the French aren't really pushing hard, so I'm going to just kind of move up my far left just a little bit, get some uh, shots on these militia, try to route those guys, and then basically just change uh, change the face of the line. Uh, rotate it from uh, pointing in that direction to point in that direction. And I've still got a decent position. Uh, my general's bodyguard is still operable. Uh, operable, I'm <laughs> you say the word, words are hard. Uh, but I've still got this nice hill, and I can still use that. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. Try to... Because the thing is, is the French sacrificed a lot of troops to overrun my artillery. And I still have troops fighting a final stand in square formation over here. Which is... Uh, you know, even though they will eventually fall, what it's doing is forcing the French to divert a lot of their resources to try to overrun these guys. And uh, what that's going to do is force the French to come at my main line in piecemeal, in pieces. Uh, piecemeal is a term, if you guys don't know. Get some vocab for the day. Uh, piecemeal is when something happens in pieces. Force the French to come at me in piecemeal, which is going to further allow me to utilize the terrain uh, to fend off this larger French army in a more manageable size, and it looks like my boys are breaking square, maybe? I think they're breaking square, they're just uh, breaking formation, and it's getting desperate for them. The French infantry firing on their own troops to try to hit some of my men out there. Moving some troops into the forest as well. I think they uh, routed that militia I had, yep. Uh, back at the main line, we're doing a decent job of uh, getting some good hits on the French, they're kind of in an awkward position strategically because they've got this hill right here, so it's forcing them to redirect a lot of their forces and bunch them up, which gives me a better opportunity to get really nice hits at all these guys, because the more troops there are in one spot, the more likely my bullets are of finding somebody to hit. Got some flanking fire on them too, And it's forcing the French to reposition over there. Over here, French troops coming out of the woods. Going to force us to reposition our uh, our new right flank. Used to be our center. A lot of dead horses down here. But yeah, as you can see, the French coming out of the literal woodwork to force it to try to overwhelm our right flank again. Get, man, that guy just went down. RIP.
And the French may be gearing up for another melee assault against their line. Looks like they are. Getting some shots off on them as they come at me, bro, though. Oh, this guy's musket misfired. Get your shit together, son! Come on and fire! Oh, now you're gonna pretend like, come on, get your shot off! Come on, get your shot off! There you go! Oh, right in front of him! Oh, brutal! Alright, I'll allow it. Maybe he was waiting to fire until he saw the whites of his eyes. Uh, but there we go. We're pulling up more troops from, I believe, our left flank to help out at the right. Just to extend our line a little bit because the French are getting frisky over here. And I am going to go in for a bold uh, melee charge. Support my boys. Now over here on the left, it looks like we are... Actually, so this is where this was really interesting. I went in uh, with... A really dense uh, militia formation against the French, and they actually repelled the me the melee charge. Uh, I think it was just the position I had to charge uphill to reach them, uh, so they actually repelled that assault. But it's a lot. It's buying me time to get some more flaming fire on the French center. So you can see we're wrecking this uh, brigade here. These guys are going down fast. Oh man, that guy got wrecked. And I've got more troops I pulled in from my left uh, to support over here. I'm getting them a little bit on a hill so we can just fire into the mob down there and support. But it is getting desperate down here. Uh, but it looks like we are shattering that French assault. The line infantry are wavering. The militia are shattered. Oh, that guy just went down. So, but, uh, you know, the battle continues. We're sending the general's bodyguard because they're just getting shot by this uh, French line infantry unit. Sending them into the mix. Trying to run down some of these guys, but uh, we're going to now send that infantry to go assault this French line infantry group. I believe I have ordered some of these units to plug bayonets uh, out of disparity. Desperation. That guy just went down. I think he was shot close up. Yeah, okay, so we've got the plug payments now. And we've got this unit to hold the line, hold the little gap here against. It looks like the French are trying to follow up that maneuver, trying to throw troops through that gap. But uh, unfortunately what that means is we're going to take advantage of that and get some really good shots in as they try to maybe send troops to go support that melee brawl. But we're going to get some nice shots off on the French as they try to maneuver downhill. And that French light infantry unit holding steady as uh, they kind of get overwhelmed down there. Oh, that guy just went down. So the you know the French are still in this fight. Oh, that guy got shot point blank. They're trying to get some shots off close up before they formalize their assaults against this line. It looks like it's gonna force a melee with this unit as well. Get some more shots off close up. Yeah, the French line down here is holding admirably. Uh, now to the left, it looks like the French also going for a melee assault with some militia. Now 
Really nice uh, pan shot there. 1917 style. My line infantry uh, dropping fast down to 62. Even the officer's getting his pistol. Oh, I think he got a kill it. Nice. And we have repelled that militia group. Got a uh, heavily depleted uh, French line infantry unit down there. Oh, this guy just went down. Oh, and the guy behind him, too. Brutal. But we got the drummer boy still. That's what matters. But I think our flag bearer went down a while ago. Oh, nice shot from the officer. But it looks like we repelled that uh, line of infantry assault. Getting the musket balls back out as we fire some shots into the French uh, left over here. Sending the cavalry to support this melee as the French continue to hold. But I think we've finally broken that unit, shattered, and we're going to follow up that assault, send the infantry in. The cavalry uh, general's bodyguard did a great job supporting that infantry assault. We're going to continue moving the infantry down the line. They've got punk bayonets, and they're no good in a line formation. We're going to keep up the assault and charge this uh, French position here on our right. But these guys are exhausted, so they're moving a little bit slower. And we're going to follow that up with a melee assault with uh, the troops that still have uh, not utilized their bayonets yet. So we can keep their firing if necessary. Over on my left, it looks like we are finally breaking the uh, French right flank. Now they have some militia still in the fight. I brought some of my militia came back to the fight. We're bringing them back in. So what we're going to do is bring these guys into a position, I believe, to get some flanking fire. There's still a lot of French troops out there. And I think they're, they've got their General's Cavalry back there, too. Repositioning a line infantry unit, a pretty healthy unit number. Oh, that officer just went down. And we've shattered that French line infantry unit. So we're going to reposition real quick on my uh, right. Over on my left, we're... Uh, Bringing the militia into this line, getting them part of the formation. As the French right regroups, they've got some line of sure about 50, or sorry, uh, about uh, 20. Those are shattered. Where's the end of militia unit? Okay, so those guys are broken too, maybe just from the routing line of the tree. So we're going to swing these guys around uh, to get in a position about right here. Get some shots off on these French. Now over on my right, we are going to storm the hill here. Go after the French line. A bold charge. Because these guys are going to get some decent shots on us. And we've got our bayonets plugged. We're getting some shots off. Oh, that guy just got wrecked up at the front of the line. Now they are holding their cavalry back. They're holding their general's cavalry back. Now I'm not sure if the French have artillery. I thought they did. Okay, they do back here. And it looks like they're holding it back. Maybe they're out of ammo with their artillery. It's crazy because I don't feel like I've seen any of the French cannonballs. Maybe they got stuck in some mud somewhere. Uh, but over here I'm using my, uh, my line that has not plugged bayonets yet to just get some good shots off 
on the French Reserve. Pushing my troops forward. Now my militia, they've just been fighting for a long time, so they're going to get, uh, I think they are actually going to route pretty soon. Oh, that game just got wrecked. And going for a melee charge against this line down with my line infantry. These guys are shattered. Now I'm sending in my cavalry to help support the battle continuing over here to this hill. Because the light infantry are holding for France. And it looks like the French are evacuating their general, trying to pull him back to the cavalry. So I'm going to go send in troops to overwhelm these last uh, French light infantry troops. We're now wavering. About 50 of them left. And there we go. It looks like we've broken them. And that's it for the French line. Uh, my militia has broken now. I think the artillery may have actually hit them. I'm not sure. I, Because I feel like the French artillery is set up. No, they're not. Okay, so this is what happened. They were in transit and what happened was we hit their wagon here uh, and it forced uh, maybe it took out the like the officer leading the artillery uh, but battery but wow words are hard uh, but whatever happened we got a hit in on these guys maybe with some just a lucky artillery hit and uh, cause some confusion. So what's going to happen is, with the few troops I have left, that are all exhausted, by the way, we're going to reposition and prepare for a final assault on the French uh, commander in his artillery wagon here. So I am going to actually fast forward for you guys just a little bit here as we get our troops in position to assault the uh, French battery and their uh, their general. Now, fortunately, some of our units have been fighting in a line for a long time, so they're actually pretty fresh. Like this unit here, what we're looking at, um, that's that unit that was really just shooting a lot. It wasn't doing a lot of like melee combat. So, they're pretty fresh. Uh, our other units that have been in melee for a long time are pretty exhausted, uh, very tired, very tired, but a lot of our units are pretty energized. So we are going to move in on these guys now, put it back on uh, regular speed for you guys. And we've got my general's bodyguard, 12 of those guys, they're moving up as well. Uh, not going to go into any combat with them. Just move them up for um, morale purposes, and here we go. Go capture these French guns. Try to capture the French commander if we can. Maybe yank him from his horse, take him prisoner.
Let's see here. There's, I think that's the fridge general. Let's see if we can take him out. I like his uniform. I like that orange. And I think he's gonna. Oh, there he goes. We took down his horse. So uh, I think we'll take him prisoner, and we'll overwhelm these cannons. We'll be able to steal for the French and use them against the French later in this war. So good job, boys. And that's going to do it for the battle. I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon subscribers: the Togmatargus, Bob Wilson, the Locagos, Melissa Carter, Neil Christie. If you guys. Want to join our Patreon? You can head to the link in the video description below. Uh, otherwise, if you guys like this battle, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more battles from 18th century Europe, let me know in the comments below which battles you'd like to see. If you want to stay up to date on all of our battle reenactments, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.